Hello and welcome to the first episode of the new Game Hammer spin-off show, Finishing Moves. This is the show where I'm going to be talking about, in a retrospective format, all of the games that I've actually completed, usually live on YouTube when I've been playing them on the live streams. However, today is a bit different because this is a game that I completed on the Nintendo Switch and then thought, hmm, it would have been a good idea to do that on YouTube, but I was so eager to play it that I had to just go for it. So here we go. Let's get straight into The Legend of Zelda's Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Some games stand out for you from the moment you see them, while others, they grow on you as you play. For me, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity was a must-play from the second I saw it. I've long been a fan of the Dynasty Warriors hack-and-slash brawler style of game with its frenetic action and a feeling of actually being part of the battle. Combining that style of game with The Legend of Zelda, a series that I've long enjoyed playing but have never actually sat down and finished a game in, I have to admit, made this an obvious choice for the first episode of this new show. Here's a game in a genre I love, with a setting that I really enjoy, and I have a new show dedicated to finishing games, so I would be able to get myself over that final hurdle that I've had with Zelda games and actually finish it. So here we are. Now that I've reached the end of the game, it's time to put the finishing move on Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. The game borrows the art style and numerous plot elements directly from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Set 100 years before the events of that game, Link and Zelda are once again pitted against their nemesis, Ganon. Their mission is to rally together the races of Hyrule so that they can all fight as one to take down the immensely powerful Calamity Ganon. I'd love to say they're going to defeat him once and for all, but there are two problems with that. Firstly, this is set before Breath of the Wild, where Calamity Ganon is still there. And two, this is the Legend of Zelda we're talking about here, where Ganon is as constant an entity in those games as Link is. I think I you think and I are, are destined to do this forever. <laughs> now you might be asking yourself, and rightly so, how Calamity Ganon is here 100 years before he's supposed to be there according to Breath of the Wild. And that's a simple question to answer. Time travel. Age of Calamity is set in an alternative timeline where some of Ganon's malice managed to escape the climactic battle at the end of Breath of the Wild and go back in time. This split the universe off into a separate reality where he's now got a chance to fight once more in a time before Zelda and company have got their act together. If all of that sounds a little like nonsense to allow this game to exist, well yeah, you're right. But don't worry, no. The game is a lot of fun regardless of its setup. Link and Zelda team up with a time-travelling guardian from the Breath of the Wild game and go on an adventure across the whole of Hyrule to solve various groups' problems by hitting them with swords and smacking them with spells in an absolutely massive set of battles. Then, when everyone who had problems is happy and everyone who caused those problems is dead, all of them band together to take on Ganon in a series of epic battles that have to be seen to be believed. The plot is fairly straightforward, and while the cutscenes are a little silly at times and a little angsty at others, Zelda continues to be rather nervous, nerdy and unsure that she can handle the task at hand for far too long in the story for my liking, but it all nevertheless culminates in a truly epic game. If you've already played the original Hyrule Warriors, or in fact any of the Dynasty Warriors series of games, or its spin-offs, then you already know how to play Age of Calamity. For everyone else, buckle up, because there's no experience quite like these epic brawlers. The main game centres around a map of Hyrule. There will be various tasks that need to be completed on this map in one of three ways. The first is the simplest, you deliver supplies to someone who needs them, in exchange for a power-up for a specific character. This you do by clicking on the marker on the map and giving the needy some of the crap that you've accumulated during the game. So far, so good. The second is a training mission, where a character gains some experience and you get to learn how the various skills and abilities of the various characters work. These are essentially tutorial missions, but they help to power up your characters and they're woven into the plot very well. Instead of every tutorial being at the start of the game, hours before you've even needed to use a certain ability, they unlock as the game goes on, 
organically introducing new stuff in time for you to be able to use it. They also help level up your characters, which benefits the main game, so it all actually works very well together. It's all good. I like this method a lot, and I think more games should use it. Then there's the third kind of task, which are the actual missions. These start out with a few smaller brawls with the various enemies that you find in the game. It introduces how the game works slow enough for newcomers, but with enough meat on it on each battle to whet the appetite of the seasoned warriors player. You can choose which character to fight as, but you'll have a very small selection at first. And if you're like me, you won't really give the character selection a second thought, because Link is the best option. He mixes melee attacks with ranged spells and abilities very nicely, and you really don't need anyone else. But if you like variety, other characters are available. As the game progresses and the threat ramps up, so does the size and complexity of each battle. This is where the narrative and the gameplay complement each other incredibly well. There's a proper sense of the war against Calamity Ganon seriously heating up when your ooh, just one mission quick skirmishes turn into hour-long pitched battles against wave upon wave upon wave of opponents, all laid out across enormous maps. At more than one point in the late game, I actually found myself saying out loud, holy crap, when allies and I were cornered and the enemy just kept coming. The game draws you into its world and it won't let you go until you beat it. And you'll want to beat it because defeating a boss is one of those battles where it's just a pure dopamine rush. This will make you earn your victory and it's all the sweeter for it. The game is relentless in its pacing once the stakes are raised, but it does ease you into the story with some quick battles and simple training challenges. Every mechanic is introduced gradually and I didn't feel overwhelmed about the range of options at any time. I felt overwhelmed sometimes with the battles, but that was a different matter. It's all well paced, well thought out and well executed. Graphically it's very nice, but I'm not sure I can give it credit for that since it's using Breath of the Wild's imagery. What I can credit it for is the feel you get when operating one of the gargantuan creatures in a set piece battle. There's just something overwhelmingly cathartic about taking out an entire enemy battalion with a single shot from your giant robot and it will never cease to be cool. Even outside of these set pieces, battles are thrilling and you get a proper feel for how easily Ganon could win with the overwhelming number of enemies he has at his disposal. One wrong move on your part and Hyrule is done for. As I mentioned earlier, story and gameplay pair well here and the Dynasty Warriors style may well be the perfect choice for depicting just how screwed Hyrule can get in a Zelda game. That said, some of the maps are confusing at times. Hyrule Castle is apparently designed to confuse invading enemies and give the defenders a fighting chance during an attack. But the problem of course with that kind of thinking in a video game is, well the player is also not from that area, so the player is usually as confused as the attackers would be. I got lost so many times trying to reach the next objective that it's not even funny. This happened outside the castle as well on several of the maps. They twist and turn over themselves, which usually works to bring you back into fights from another angle, which is great. But it also means that you can take one wrong turn and end up having to traipse all the way across a map again just to get to the point where you can take that one tiny corner that you missed the first time and begin the march, the long march, to the next objective. It's very frustrating. Also, there's a fair amount of grinding required to get key items that you'll need to be able to complete the hey we need five rare twigs from the elephant tree and a bucket of finest cake mix side quests. You know, the ones where, oh just bring us some of the stuff and we'll give you a level up on your character. Yeah, some of them get really annoying. The quests aren't necessary to complete the game, but they do power up your characters and you're going to want to do at least a few of them in order to make the main battles a little easier on yourself, especially near the end. So when you spot one of those missions that would power up Captain Bumpface, that character that you'd like to try out as a main, but who's just that little bit underpowered for the missions ahead, you'll have to go back and refight older battles to get a few of those leaves and twigs that some random git needs in order to add extra hearts to the good captain's health bar. At the start they're easy enough to get a, a nice gradual upgrade to your characters, but by the end it's slowing things down far too much for my liking. Oh, and the frame rate drops every now and then. Now this might not seem like a big deal, and in most games it really isn't, but when you're knee deep in arrows from Ganon's hordes, a freak bit of slowdown will really mess up your timing, and it could easily become the difference between life and death. 
Now I get why it's happening. The Switch is rendering an entire army of bastards who all want you dead after all, but it doesn't change the fact that it's frustrating when unexpected lag kills you. I want to know that me dying to that random minion was my fault, not lag. But despite all these flaws, the game is an amazing experience. It's easily one of my favourite games of the current console generation, and I'd be happy to come back and play it in the years to come. The gameplay eases you in, and then once it's got you hooked, it doesn't let go. The long, arduous battles at the climax of the story make you feel like you've earned every single victory on the road to defeating Ganon. It's a hell of an experience, and I cannot recommend it highly enough. Get it, play it, love it. This isn't just a game for Legend of Zelda fans. It's a game with mass appeal, especially if you're into proper old-school tactical brawlers. There's enough depth here to make you feel like it isn't simply a button masher, and a deep story that will keep you engaged. It's a proper all-rounder with a core gameplay loop that harkens back to the addictive arcade game days, and I love it. And that's why it gets the first finishing move rating of Loved It. So there you go. I think you'll agree that it is an incredible game. I thoroughly enjoyed playing it. There were some sections in it that will stick in my memory for a very long time because just getting into the battles and feeling part of it, then all of a sudden the enemy forces start to overwhelm you again. It's like, holy crap. I had that literal experience where I actually said that out loud while playing the game. I was that into it. Few games get that kind of uh, treatment from me because... Most of the time, having the controller in your hand kind of uh, reinforces that divide, so you are still playing a game, but this one really drew me in. So I was very, very impressed with it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the show, and I'd like to see what you thought about the game. If you've played it, do let me know in the comments section down below. Also, do remember to like, comment, subscribe, because unfortunately, YouTube's algorithm does love to punish any channels that don't get likes, comments, and subscriptions. So if you could do just a little favor and help the channel out, that would be so, so fantastic. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the show. I'll see you next time on Game Hammer. If you like the show, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It really does help create future videos. That's patreon.com slash Zoe Kirk Robinson. And I've got an extra special thanks going out to Chief89, Sam Yates, Retro Mickey82, Mo Henry, and George Botterini. Thank you so much, guys.